high noon on the great plains of Africa. Kenya's Maasai Mara is renowned as country where big cats are found. Not only lazy lions and confident cheetahs, but one that's less easily seen, a far more secretive creature. Truly a cat that walks by itself, the leopard is intensely shy. It's not rare, but it is seldom sighted. Its solitary and menacing form masked by the colors of Africa. In long grass, a leopard can move quieter than the wind, a dappled shadow slipping through the stems. It can lie out under a tree and look like sunshine sifting through the leaves. This is the tale of one such secret leopard. The vast thorn tree savannas of Kenya were once famous for their big game hunting. Although leopards were notoriously difficult to find, they fell prey to trophy hunters. They were killed by trackers protecting livestock. Those leopards that remained became so wary and secretive that little was known about them until recently. Just very occasionally today, a leopard will allow a careful approach and so afford us a glimpse of how it lives. We followed this female and watched her for over four months while she tried to feed and raise a family. It's November, and this is yesterday's kill, a gazelle, which she put in a tree for safekeeping. The leopardess is returning to her lair. The cover of the long grass and the scatter of trees and thickets to hide in make the Maasai Mara ideal country for leopards enabling them to hold their own against the competing lions and hyenas. It was on this ridge that the leopard cubs were born four and a half months ago, in July. The cubs are still being suckled, but more and more they're being weaned onto the meat she brings back to the lair. They compete vigorously for a share of the gazelle. She has a trio of cubs, the largest a male. But because there are so many predators around, it is unlikely that she'll manage to raise all three beyond this playful stage. Sharing this patch of forest is a tiny antelope, no bigger than a hare. Dick Dick live right under the leopard's nose and avoid being eaten only by using their own highly active noses and by being even more secretive. The leopard's range is an area of some 10 square miles over which she roams from the central lair. She is basically a loner, a solitary animal, but she does communicate with other leopards by a rasping call and by scent, which she sprays onto prominent trees and bushes. These pungent messages linger for days, even weeks, a warning to other leopards that the range is occupied. A female leopard doesn't actually defend the area in which she lives. Her home range overlaps with those of neighboring females, but each leopard keeps strictly to itself. Only when a female is receptive, a brief six days or so every month or two, does she forsake her solitary ways to breed. 
Not until after she has raised her cubs will the mother become receptive again. During the four-month watch, no other female was seen in the area. But there is another leopard within the range. Unmistakably male, with his more powerful build and broader muzzle, he's half as big again as the female and probably weighs 120 pounds. He is almost certainly the only male here and the most likely father of her cubs. In all the Mara, there may be only 30 male leopards. Each is even more elusive than the female. With cold yellow eyes, he watches his world. But of him, there is little more than the occasional glimpse. Below the female leopard's lair on the ridge, herds of plains animals gather to feed on the open grasslands. Among them, the impala, which play a vital role in the leopard's life. In November, female impala leave the herd to give birth on the ridge. Here, the fawns are well hidden in the long grass and bushes. Barely 30 minutes old, the fawn can already walk. To survive, it must quickly learn to run and to hide. The leopardess knows that a lone impala female usually has a fawn nearby. Such opportunities are not to be missed. Her patience is infinite. She may spend hours edging closer and closer. She can track her prey just by its scent, staying downwind while sneaking through the long grass cover. And that also means the impala is less likely to catch her scent. She moves nervously away from her youngster. She doesn't see the leopard. The leopard is unaware that the fawn lies hidden so close and searches a new area. Seeing the impala bound away, the leopard watches intently for any sign of the fawn. It has obviously been left behind. But where? If the fawn were to move now, the end would be sudden. prize, the leopard misses more often than she kills. The same is true for most big cats. The female impala will feel it is safe to return to her calf only when the leopard is long gone.
Leopards are essentially nocturnal. But they are also opportunists, and if a hunting opportunity arises, they will take it, whatever the time of day. In these early weeks of weaning her cubs, she concentrates on hunting small prey, which she can easily carry back to the lair. A young impala, a baby warthog, or an African hare. Her cubs come first. She seldom eats much herself until she has fed them. An indication of her lightning reflexes is her ability to catch and kill a vervet monkey. Sometimes she has to carry her kill more than a mile back to her forest lair. There in seclusion and under cover of darkness, the leopard family will feed. It's now mid-December, and the cubs are five months old. Time for them to venture out. The leopardess has killed an impala in the night and has left it under an acacia tree not far from the wooded ridge that is home. The male cub has reached the kill first and has claimed possession. As with all male leopards, sharing is not part of his nature. Only when he is satisfied will the other cubs be allowed to feed. The mother is on the alert. Out in the open, they are more vulnerable. It's a trial for the hungry female cubs to watch Big Brother eating his fill. The female's concern is well-founded. The smell of the carcass attracts other diners, dangerous ones, hyenas. Hyenas have the most powerful bone-crushing jaws in Africa and show no fear of leopards. But the leopardess has an escape. Taking the meat, she goes where no hyena can follow. Even in this emergency, the young male is still annoyed at having his meal taken from him. Up here, the leopards are safe. So is the kill. And the hyenas know it. But hardly have they turned to go before the family squabble returns to earth. The mother does not try to intervene. The hyenas are moving away and she stands guard, carefully watching their retreat. Only after danger has departed does she eat what little the youngsters have left.
it is now high time to return to the safety of the lair. The female calls softly to her cubs. She's bringing them to heel before setting off. By late morning, the heat is intense and the family pauses to drink. Pools like this are not available throughout the year and leopards are quite able to exist simply on the fluids contained in the bodies of their prey. of the Mara, a new season is beginning. Mother Leopard is now seeking larger prey for her fast-growing. 